Welcome back, anglers. I'm the Survival of This, and we return to Russian Fishing 4, where we're still working our way up to level 12. We're at 13.2 thousand experience out of the 18 thousand we need, so probably going to be a couple more weekends or so to go. I just want to check before I do uh, keep us going. That's a medium-sized hook, and that's a medium. Okay. So this weekend is again just going to be using both of the feeder rods and probably the float rod. Trying our hand at catching as many fish as we can for the experience. I'm actually going to take us down into this area here of Mosquito Lake. For all the times I've been on this map and we've tried catching fish, I don't think I've ever actually made it all the way down to that corner to actually see what we can land from there. I think I've always stopped a little bit shy just because we run out of time, but I'm going to set that as our primary destination. And we'll spend the weekend there seeing what we can get. It is going to take a little while just for us to run out there, but... Like I say, at the pace we're going, we're getting maybe about... Oh, approximately 2,000 experience per weekend? We'll hopefully be there within just a couple more, though it might be a bit longer. I, It's hard to say, really. All depends on the size of the fish we seem to get. And I think that's probably the big focus to keep in mind, is instead of trying to get the number of them, we need to mind the sizing more so. Because a really good single size, like roach or something, that gives us like maybe 200 experience, is going to be far more valuable and worth it to get than, say, three small ones that only give you 10 or 50 each. So, let's see. Yeah, we'll get to the other side where there's kind of like this little beach or this point and see about going from here. And here's a decent looking little spot we can try at. Okay, so let's see. We've got a float rod. I guess we can start with that. We'll also try to put more into practice about the, our patience we need for working that rod because I think I kind of found out the issue I was having with it uh, last time. There we go. That one's good. And the problem I was having was that we had it so... Uh, I was a little too fast on the draw when I would immediately pick up the rod. I have to basically pick it up, let the float camera show everything off, and then try reeling in or pulling in the line and see what's on there. It might be something where you act too quickly and it doesn't register there's actually the fish on. So yeah, we just gotta wait with these. Now hopefully the fog will die down a little... Uh, hopefully in a little while. And just see what comes of trying in this area. But yeah, so we're working right here for now. This is kind of shallow around here, so I don't know if maybe I should try moving up to this point to work at two and a half. There is also the five to try, but I don't know if we'll have the distance from the shores to do it. I could try renting a boat and seeing how that goes as well, but we'll start with just this and see for the weekend. Just make sure those are nice and tight. Oh, I'm not sure what's with the weird red glow from this spot. Is it just like the way the sun's coming up, or is there like a little light or something here? No, oh, I guess it's just how the sun's coming up, because now everything's starting to get a little bit of a pink color to it. But yeah, we'll try here a little bit. I wonder if I should go for the... Oh no, I can only have three rods at a time, that's right, so I can't do the spinning rod too. I basically just gotta let it do what it will. I actually can't tell which rod that was that was jingling. Didn't look like either of them had much movement to them. Oh, well, we do got something going on with the float rod. I'll just wait a moment and see. Just gotta remember, once it does go fully under, to give it a moment before trying to act on it.
I wonder if this is even an area I should try the spinning rod in, just because it has like a lot of the lily pads in that. Although, okay now, there we go. A perch. Okay, we'll keep that. I was thinking about it, but then with the time it does take to get out here, and using the spinning rod is probably the one rod that's going to get snagged the most, or has the highest chance of that, maybe we'll just leave it be. We'll just keep doing what we can with these so far. God, it is so quiet, though. I mean, a good thing, because I did turn down the effect volume, because some of those sound effects were just really out of level in whack. Oh. Now, this is why I figured I'd go for the float rod. It seems to see activity the most frequently out of any of the rod types we use. It's just that we do have to be mindful of... When we... Tr Ooh, wow. Okay, you know what? Oh, shoot. I shouldn't have tried that. We had something big on there. What it was exactly, I don't know. Uh, do I have another medium? I guess we'll go for a small. Yeah, I don't know what that was that was big enough to not be able to be pulled in, but I shouldn't have tried taking the step back. Okay. Yeah, you're good to be brought in. So let's see what we got here. Nothing too big given the tension on line. But at least we are going to be able to land something after that last snag, or not a snag, but like the break we had. And what are you? Huh. Yeah, see again, only 22 experience for these guys. The bigger fish are what we got to try going for more. But I don't really know the best way of really targeting them, aside from going for larger hooks. I am kind of tempted to, again, look at getting a float fishing kit as the uh, next big purchase, just because this is the line that always seems to see it, the action so steadily. Well, truthfully, with how much tension there was online, I don't even know if I could have brought the fish in. It's like it was steadily going up, and it's not like there's a reel on this for line to be taken out. It's just kind of like it was stuck or stagnant, what it was. And now nothing's happening to this. Just gotta wait and see what happens. But it does feel like this area... Oh, of course, now you're going off again. It does feel like this area is not really seen much in the way of activity. So I might want to look at... Oh, there we go. The 348 grams, and there's at least 100 experience. I'll give these two lines a little bit more time, then probably bring them in, switch their bait up. And we'll try going for this long little stretch of deep water here. Just make sure those are tight. Yeah, and wait and see what happens. Okay, we got a little bit of interest on the left one. Uh, is it getting steady enough? Not quite, I think. Okay, now it is. No, oh, and of course now the float line is also showing activity too. 
Well, I'm not too fussed about the float line, but we'll bring this in. Oh, it's tiny, whatever it is. Looks like maybe a little crucian. Yeah, just not even 100 grams. Okay, we'll put you away. See if we can get anything in on this. And then we'll bring the other rod in too. Oh, I thought I had something there. I guess it's because I'm so used to so many fishing mini games. It's always about uh, you have to strike or like set the hook as soon as the fish strikes. So that's always been the rush to try to bring the float rod in. But it's not how it seems to really want to operate for Russian Fishing 4. You almost have to give it a minute to make sure the fish is hooked good and then you can bring in. Yeah, just bring this in. Probably nothing on there. Yeah, nothing. Okay. Given how shallow it is all around here, I think it is going to be worth it trying to go for the deeper water. So let's just do a quick little jog up around to this point here. And see if we got any clear areas to cast out to. It looks like we can work off of this spot here. And let's see. Uh, let's go for the bark beetle larva. That's something I've got a lot of and I haven't used it all that much. So see what that gets us. Uh, here I'm going to change up for... Maybe I'll try the mayfly larva. We don't have a lot of that, so maybe it'll be something... Can get us some interesting catches. There we go. And we'll do the same with this one. I'm not going to do the power cast just because I don't think we really need it for or we're trying to get the bait to land. There we go. And we just gotta wait and see what happens to this spot. So far, ah, it's been a little bit slow for how we usually go about, but I think also because of the time it took to go from the hub area to this corner, that has slowed down a little bit for like our catch to minute ratio. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know if I would want to chuck a ground bait in there as well or not. I don't know if that would do anything, or I should just leave it in the, uh, how it's set up on the bottom rods. Ooh. One of them gave us a little chime. I can't tell which one it was. And both lines are still taut, so it's not like there's something really small on one. Oh, there we go. Now this one might have a little bit more size to it. Let's see. Ah, uh, what do we got? Oh, a bream! Okay, we'll keep that. Cast that back out. Just give it a moment. Oh, and we're finally seeing something on this rod. Okay. Now. Yeah, good. Give it a moment once it's fully down. Oh. I feel like we've had to have done these tasks before, but... I don't know. Seems like they keep coming up pretty often for us. 
There we go, put you back down. And just keep working away and see. But at this stage of the game, I I mean, I could look at releasing the fish to speed things along, but I feel like I want to start, keep saving up and earning the silver so that we can buy better gear or equipment. And as we start getting into, like, new areas, we'll need better gear. Not so much for these two rods or, well, maybe these two rods. Might have to see about, like, if they could use a stronger line or, again, larger hook sizes. Uh, definitely the float fishing rod, because that, I think, is almost as beginner as you can get for it. <laughs> and just slowly see how we keep going along. I don't even know what episode we're up to now for rushed fishing for. I don't know if we're around episode 50 or we're still a little behind of that. Nothing else on those two. Nothing to the float rod. I'm trying to think if I have anything to talk about for topics, but with so many new series starting, it's not like there's anything that's going to be coming to the channel recently. It's basically kind of in a decent spot right now. The only thing with summer is, with everything heating up, that also means trying to do these recordings makes it really hot in where I do them. So I don't think I'll be doing as long of recording stretches as I used to do. Probably just try to get, say, like, three, four episodes at a time done. Maybe push to five, just so that way that can, like, get a lot done at once, but... Depends on how I can hold up through the heat. And you want nothing to do these... Those are both tight. Oh, that's gone down. I thought it had gone down. Maybe it just popped right back up. Yeah, so far I don't think this... Uh, what is this, the maggot or the bark beetle? I think this is the bark beetle. It doesn't seem to be the best bait for using in this area, that's for sure. Same with the mayfly on the other two rods. It was interesting to catch a bream with one, but... Nothing is happening too quick here. Like, yeah, there's no activity on any line right now. Might have to change this back for another bait type once I bring it in. And time-wise, eh, we're not doing too bad. We can go for a few more minutes. I might have to see about trying to change and uh, work at the even deeper spot. I don't think I'll go back and rent the boat this weekend. Maybe, depending on what we get for the silver next weekend, we'll give that a shot. There we go, finally something happening here. Now. Oh, maybe I should have been a little faster on it. Okay, well I'm changing off the bait, that's not working worth a dang. Um, I'm gonna try the mayfly larva on this, maybe it'll work better being like, towards the surface. And yeah, nothing on either of these two rods. I think I'll have to... If they do see anything on them, that'll be the last things we do for this episode. Uh, maybe I just got unlucky, unlucky with a bad spot, or... What? But man, it is... Not really producing here. And we're pointed towards... 
Okay, that could be it too. We're not actually pointing towards the deeper water like I wanted. So when we do go up a little bit more north, we'll make sure we're folks or we're facing the deep part. But yeah, both lines are still taut, so it's not like there's something on and This just seems like a bad spot. <laughs> well, I'll give it a a little bit longer and see. I'm not even sure if I've heard either of these rods chime since I tossed them in, to be honest. Let's bring them out. I'll bring everything out, move us to the spot for next episode, and then be ready to focus hard at that point. Yeah, nothing on you. So the mayfly larva does not seem to be the thing for here. Maybe I I might just go back to the casters because they were getting us a decent amount of like fish in. It's just I don't have a lot of them in our supply. And slowly reel it in. Even the float rods like no activity here. That goes to show you just how dead of a spot we found. Put you away. And put you away. Okay, so if we want to go for the five, uh, whatever depth is, I want to be facing here. So this is kind of the spot we want to work off of. So we'll start next episode right here and see if we can get some good fish landed. For now, though, we got to end this episode here. Thank you guys for joining me on this episode of Russian Fishing 4. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to give a like. And if you have any comments, tips, or tricks, be sure to in the comments right down below. And until I do see you all in the next video, anglers and survivors, please remember, as always, to take care, stay alive, and happy angling.